So the iPad mini 6 came out last week and it was the surprise of the September Apple event and man, it did not disappoint. What a fun, powerful little device. So what are the best ways to put this little powerhouse to work? Here are some of the apps I would recommend everyone to install first. Let's ramble. Hold up. Hey, what's up guys? It's great to see you all again. And if you're new here, I'm Patrick, and this is where I ramble about tech and other stuff. So the iPad is a really cool little device. I never expected ever to be interested in an iPad mini. I'm an iPad Pro guy. I love the big screen, the power, the magic keyboard, etc. But there's something magical about this little guy. And judging by your reactions and comments on my first impressions video, I'm definitely not alone in this. But what I also noticed is that we all feel like we can really use this tablet somehow, just haven't quite figured out where it fits in our workflow. And as I'm working towards my full review, I'm slowly starting to figure out exactly that. And probably the most important question is, which apps do I need to install? Which apps are just perfect for the iPad mini 6? So here is a list of some of my must have apps. These are the apps that are essential for me in my everyday use. So let's start here. But just like my best apps for iPad Pro series, I'm gonna turn this into a series as well. So if you like getting regular updates about some of the most amazing apps out there, some tips and tricks on how to put this thing to use, go hit that subscribe button and tag along for the ride. I upload at least twice a week, so there will be plenty of fresh content coming your way. Right, so let's start with one of the very basic essentials, which is Calzy. For some inexplicable reason, the iPad still doesn't come with a calculator. Why Apple hasn't included one in iPadOS is beyond me. And if any of you guys know what the reason is, do let me know in the comments. I will be very, very curious. Anyway, Calzy is definitely the best third-party calculator app available. It has really handy features like dragging and dropping values to store them for reuse later. It's already been optimized for iPadOS 15, including support for quick notes, so you can import your results super easily. For some reason, it doesn't seem to have a home screen widget, at least not yet, but it does have a widget in the today view. The app isn't free. I think it's like three bucks in the app store, but it's three bucks I'm willing to spend because it's just ridiculous that the iPad doesn't come with one. Next up, let's talk about note taking because this is one of the major use cases for this iPad for me. As we know, this iPad mini is compatible with the Apple Pencil 2, which snaps onto the side, pairs and charges, just like it does on the iPad Pro. And that is one of the things that made this iPad instantly more interesting to me. Now the Apple Notes app has come a long way. You can now swipe in a quick note from the bottom right corner from any page, and you can also add tags to your notes, which is very, very useful, especially if you store a lot of notes. But for serious note taking, I still like to use Notability, which in my opinion is the best note taking app out there for handwritten notes at least. I use different apps for typing and organizing notes, but we will get to that in a second. So in terms of handwritten notes, there are two big camps on iPadOS, I would say. Some people love GoodNotes, which is also a great app, and some swear by Notability. I belong to the latter because Notability has audio recording built in, whereas GoodNotes doesn't. Now, you might be wondering what audio recordings have to do with handwriting. Well, the way audio recordings work in Notability is that you record audio while taking notes. And then when you return to your notes later and you tap on a segment of your handwritten notes, it will play back the audio it was recording at that very moment. So let's say you're at a lecture or at a business meeting and you just wanna write down snippets or even bullet points, you can tap on the bullet point and listen to the context from the lecture or the meeting, and that alone makes Notability the note-taking app for me. And of course, it has all the essential features of a good note-taking app, but without making it too complicated. Very simple UI, easy to use, I love it. What I don't love is handwriting with my Apple Pencil directly on the glass. So one of the first things I ordered for this new iPad mini is a paper-like screen protector, which is in the mail as we speak. Plus, they kindly agreed to sponsor this video, so thank you, Paperlike. If you don't know, Paperlike is a screen protector, but it's much more than that. If you're like me and you'd like to use your iPad to take handwritten notes, Paperlike is a must-have. I don't like how slippery the Apple Pencil feels directly on the iPad's glass surface, and Paperlike mimics the feeling of writing on actual paper. You get more control of the pencil when you write, sketch, or draw due to the Paperlike resistance and roughness. It makes your handwriting look much prettier and it also drastically reduces glare and fingerprints. But because of the Nano Dots technology, it doesn't make your screen look grainy. If you're planning on using an Apple Pencil, I can highly recommend getting a paper like. 
Every order includes a set of two paper leg covers and application accessories. They offer worldwide shipping, so if you want to try it out for yourself, there's a link below the video. All right, back to the apps. We just talked about handwritten notes. Now, for all my typed notes and organizing those notes, and basically my entire life, I use Notion. I will keep this short because I'm sure most of you already know Notion. I just wanted to mention it because it actually looks and feels great on the iPad mini as well. Notion is extremely customizable, and once you have it set up the way you like, there's just nothing better out there. The last note style app I absolutely need to mention is Just Press Record. It's the big red record button on my home screen, and that's literally what it is. Hit it and start recording. I have this installed on all my devices, my iPads, my iPhone, even my Apple Watch. They all have that big red button as a widget, and this is easily the best way to produce a quick note when you don't have time to write it down. So why not just use voice memos? Because Just Press Record transcribes everything you say, and it syncs it across your devices, which means I have little to no work turning my speech notes into written notes. Super useful app, especially when you're on the move. One of the first things I did when I got the iPad was ditch the weather app widget and replace it with Carrot Weather. Not only does it give super accurate weather reports and forecasts, Carrot has a personality, and depending on your stomach, it can get pretty racy. You can customize its personality from professional to snarky to all the way to overkill. Oh, and it comes with a beautiful selection of widgets as well, so if you like to be utterly insulted by your weather app on a daily basis, definitely try out Carrot Weather. Another stock thing I replace immediately is the keyboard. I've been using SwiftKey for a long time now. It feels super nice. You can install several languages, which it adapts to intelligently. It learns your typing habits super quickly. The emojis are laid out logically. I just love it. Definitely give this a try if you don't like the stock keyboard. The last stock app I always replace first thing before we move on to the fun stuff is Apple Mail. I don't like it at all, and my favorite third-party app is definitely AirMail. It accepts all sorts of emails, whether it's Google, Pop, IMAP, doesn't matter. It looks great, super intuitive to use, and absolutely packed with features. It syncs across all my devices, so I don't have to do a single thing to set it up on this new iPad. Everything was right there where I left it on my other devices. So if you're not a fan of Apple's Mail app either, give this one a try. I think you might be impressed. Right, the fun stuff. My current favorite messaging app is definitely Telegram. Not everyone is on an iOS device, so I don't really like using messages. WhatsApp is great, but you need a phone to use it, and there's been a lot of issues around that app lately. And Telegram is a standalone app that looks and feels kind of like WhatsApp, but with a bit of humor. The stickers are hilarious. I use Telegram to chat to some other tech YouTubers, you know who you are, and we sure like to smack that peach. On the creative side, there are a couple of apps I can't go without. The app I use the most is probably Lightroom. Cameras are getting better and better on both iPhones and iPads. Even this iPad mini has a very decent 12 megapixel camera now, which is more than fine for social media. But before I post anything, I always give it a quick once over in Lightroom. Adjust the exposure, maybe a bit of contrast, splash a color. You can get rid of little imperfections, etc. Of course, you can do much more than that, but we could do an entire video on all of its features alone. The fact that the iPad mini supports the Apple Pencil too makes it even better. There's just something about editing your photos using the pencil. It feels very precise, very accurate, very close to the photo. So if you're looking for a better way to edit your photos, definitely go give that a try. Sometimes I see a really cool font somewhere and I would love to use it myself, but I have no idea what it's called. What the font lets you hover over it with the iPad's camera and in a second, it'll give you results from a huge catalog of popular connected font sites like the font. Once you find the font you like, you can use the app to download and install it. It's simple, it's easy, I highly recommend it. For any kind of creative work like my YouTube thumbnails, I like to use Canva. It's basically a very simplified version of well-known apps like Affinity Photo or Photoshop. Those apps are amazing, but it takes a lot of time to really master them and sometimes you just need a quick design. Canva is perfect for that but don't mistake its simplicity for limitations. You can do a lot with this app. The basic version is free, but the pro version gives you really useful features like the automatic background remover and the magic resize button, which lets you resize any of your designs to perfectly fit the platform you post it to, like Instagram, YouTube, Facebook, you name it. Now, this iPad mini, because of its size, is also the ideal tablet for reading. You can easily hold it in one hand for long periods of time without any issues. I like using the Kindle app. 
It has a lot of useful features. You can annotate your books. And of course, it's hooked up to Amazon's massive library. So it's super easy to get your eBooks onto your tablet. Sometimes I'm too lazy to read or I just want to consume a book faster. In those cases, I use Audible to listen to my books. Audible is fantastic. Pretty much all of the major releases are available as an audiobook these days. And I really love listening to books a little faster. Audible lets you adjust the speed, so if the narrator is a bit too slow for you, just give him a little bump and you'll get there quicker. Some of the apps I just mentioned have either discounts or free trials. I put all of those in the description below. If you enjoyed the video, please give it one of these. It really does help the channel. Subscribe for more content like this. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one.